Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday service. I'm glad that you've been able to join us today as we look at uh, humility. David will unpack some of that later on. Uh, but for now, uh, let me share with you an opening verse and then we will pray before we start the service. Opening verses from uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 10. And Paul says, be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that as we come together, as we learn from you through this service, as we bring worship to you through this service, that we will better understand how we can love one another how we can honour one another and put others above ourselves and put you above ourselves. I pray that we will all have open minds and open hearts as we come to you today. Amen. I'm going to quickly hand over to David for some announcements uh, and then we will get into the service proper. David. So, some exciting news to share with you. From next Sunday, we are planning to start live streaming our service from church. And we're going to do that on YouTube. It won't be available on Facebook, but there will be a link on Facebook to help you find it. It will be at the usual time, and you'll be able to watch it afterwards as usual if you want to catch up in that way. It does mean that you'll be able to share more in what's happening in the church building and it will also make our online ministry much more sustainable for the longer term. Uh, so we really look forward to that. I want to ask you though just to bear with us. Uh, it's quite likely we'll find some technical challenges and hiccups along the way. It may take us a little while to get into it running smoothly. Uh, so please bear with us during that time and we'll keep you posted with more information. Uh, but hope, to, uh, hope that you'll be able to join us online in that way next week. Secondly, some other really exciting news. We are planning to run an in-person Sunday club outdoors uh, and there'll be detailed information coming round to families about that so please do look out for that. A couple of things particularly to tell you. Uh, first that you will need to drop children off before you come to the service in church if you're coming and pick them up afterwards. Uh, when you do so, please bear in mind that Townfield are live streaming from the church hall. We're sharing facilities and we want to not cause any disruption to what they're doing. Uh, so please look out for instructions about that. Secondly, if parents want to come to church while your children are in Sunday Club, we would love to see you there. But you do need to book. You need to contact the church office by Thursday morning. And we will, on those Sundays when we're running Sunday Club, give priority to parents with children who are coming uh, because we recognise that you've not been able to come into church uh, as a family. It's not been possible up to now and we want to make that possible for you. That does mean that we may not have space for everyone else next Sunday and on those particular Sundays. Um, so please make sure to book if and only if you're planning to come. And if uh, for some who are not bringing children next Sunday, we may ask you to hold back uh, if you've been coming regularly just on that occasion. Hopefully that will not be the case for long, um, but we may need to ask that this time. So we're really looking forward to that. Do look out for more information and we look forward to seeing you. See you soon. God bless you. As we embark upon our time together and with God, let us bring our confession to the Lord. Uh, as I say, Lord, be merciful. Please do join in by saying, forgive us our sin. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer. This is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. 
We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now bring worship and praise to God as we sing together, King of Kings. Catherine Jones is now going to bring us our readings today, one from Philippians and one from 1 Peter, uh, and then David will unpack a message for us. Our first reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. 
do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on a cross. Our next reading is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who will also share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Last week, we looked at Jesus' command for us to love one another. Today, we begin to see how that works out in practice. Paul begins these verses by talking about love, and then he applies it in challenging, practical ways. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, says Paul. So what does he mean by that? Well, vain conceit is perhaps easier to deal with. A combination of two negative words, attitudes that we don't see as being very attractive in people. Conceit is to have a high opinion of oneself, of your ability and importance, excessive pride. Being vain is having an excessively high opinion of your appearance, abilities or worth. These two words, which overlap rather, make a strong combination and one that we would probably quickly dismiss. We are not quick to see these traits in ourselves but they are nevertheless characteristics that are pretty widespread in our society and that we can be drawn into without realising it. Then what about selfish ambition? Ambition, by contrast, is generally regarded as a good thing, a healthy thing. The motivation to do something well, to achieve something, to make something of yourself. And ambition is generally a good thing if it's rightly aligned. The trouble is that it's very often selfish. It's often about bettering yourself, making more money, getting more power, doing what you want, getting more for yourself. And that's not a healthy thing because it's self-focused, directed towards what we want for ourselves, not what we can do for others. So Paul says, do nothing out of an overinflated opinion of yourself or out of pride, and do nothing out of the motivation to selfishly benefit yourself. Instead, he challenges his readers and us to be countercultural in our attitudes and our actions. He calls us to humility modelled on that of Jesus. So, what is humility really? Well, humility is not the same as low self-esteem. Humility is not seeing yourself as worthless, but choosing to place yourself worth less than others. Jesus is given as the ultimate example of humility because he stepped down from his position in the throne room of heaven, not just to be born as a human being and live on earth, but to be born in an animal shelter in the humblest of circumstances, to live as a very ordinary person until he began his ministry. 
through his ministry to live a very simple life focused on giving to others and above all to give his life for us in an incredibly painful death on the cross. However, Jesus didn't do any of this because he thought himself worthless. On the contrary, he claimed to be the Messiah, to be God, to be able to forgive sins, to be the judge. He demonstrated extraordinary authority, authority to teach, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to multiply food, to calm a storm. Have you understood the enormity of what Jesus did? That he is so much greater than us, and yet he set everything aside in order to reach out to us, so that we could know God, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could live in relationship with him, and so that we could receive eternal life. The impact is mind-blowing, but in order to achieve that, Jesus had to set aside everything. Humility, you see, is a choice. A choice that Jesus took to set aside his own interests and all that he had for the benefit of others. And that's the example that Paul challenges us to follow. However, humility does not mean that you become a doormat and allow others to trample all over you. Although Jesus embodied grace and forgiveness, he also firmly challenged wrong behaviour. But it is a reversal of the world's values. Instead of pushing others down in your quest for the top, you hold yourself back and lift others up. If we turn to 1 Peter 5 for a minute, we see Peter expand on this. Peter starts this chapter with an appeal to elders, to church leaders, which ties in very much with what we've already heard from Paul. Leaders are to set the example and not to use their authority selfishly, as is the way in the world around us too often, but to serve in humility and for the benefit of others. But he then goes on to urge all his readers, the Christians to whom he is writing, clothe yourselves with humility to one another. When he instructs us to clothe ourselves with humility, he's not saying that it's something superficial that can be put on and taken off at will, rather that it is prominent, obvious to anyone who sees us. In our culture, we place great store by clothes, by what people wear. We care a great deal about how we look and we spend much time choosing what clothes to buy. But what about our spiritual clothes? What about the way that we look to people around us, not physically, but in terms of our nature, our attitudes and our behaviour? Do we give as much attention to those? Which by contrast are not to be put on and taken off at will, interchangeable according to how we feel, but are to be put on, kept on and built up over time. Unlike worldly clothes, which become shabby and worn, and dirty, our spiritual clothes should grow in the way that they shine and in their beauty. Peter similarly identifies worldly characteristics that we need to put aside. Pursuing dishonest gain, selfish ambition and the desire for things or for money can lead us to compromise our standards and our integrity, but we are not to do this. Not lording it over others, again not pushing ourselves forward, seeing ourselves as better or more important, or showing arrogance or pride. Instead we're called to humility, to eagerly serve others looking for their benefit, aiming to be a positive example and role model to help others grow too. It is to our benefit too that we do all this. Peter speaks of reward, that leaders who serve as faithful and loving shepherds of God's sheep will receive a crown of glory, that all who humble themselves under God will be lifted up by him later. But for benefit for ourselves, we need to have a very long-term view, looking not to this life, but beyond. And we need to trust God, putting into his hands what form our reward will take and what it may look like. So what would it look like if we were to live this way? If we were to be truly humble, 
after the example of Jesus. We wouldn't be concerned about making a name for ourselves. We wouldn't worry about accumulating things. We wouldn't be envious towards people who have things we don't and perhaps can't. We wouldn't strive for power or wealth or pleasure. We would trust the Lord for our future. And in contrast, we would be showing by our words and our actions that we value others. We'd be willing to make sacrifices for their benefit. We would rejoice when someone has a success or gains a new position or role. We would eagerly look for ways to serve others and serve the Lord through them. And what about ambition? Is it okay to take pride in a job well done? Well, absolutely, but with what motivation and for whose benefit is it being done? Is it okay to accept praise for something we've done? Well, we all need encouragement, so yes, and thank the person who gives it, but don't allow it to feed pride. Recognise that God has equipped and enabled you to do the thing and give the glory to him. Maybe all this will take a big change of attitude. When Paul says, has the same mindset as Christ Jesus, perhaps that seems just too big a step, too far away. But he can help us to change. Paul says in Romans, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation is possible by the grace of God, forgiveness through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit within us, if we welcome him and work with him. The trouble is that you might be saying, all that sounds really hard. I don't want to put my own interests aside. I don't want to pour myself out for others. Well, let me say that Jesus did that for you, so he's entitled to ask it of us in return. But that doesn't mean we have to live in misery. God can change your heart if you ask him and work with him. Ask him to give you a new deep love for others, to be able to see them as he sees them. Ask him to help you in any areas of this that you're struggling with. Lift to him your selfish desires and aspirations. Put them into his hands. And as an act of choice, commit yourself to follow his will you'll find that not only is it possible to change, but he will give you a heart to change. You can find far greater fulfilment in serving God and others, in adopting his priorities and attitudes, than in pursuing your own. If we live like this, we'll have a community where we love and value one another, and where each person feels loved and valued, where we serve one another and provide for each other's needs. So is there something that you need to change in your attitudes towards yourself and others? Is there an adjustment needed in your aims and direction in life? Is there some way you can be involved in loving, caring for and valuing others through a role serving in the church or through practically providing for others' needs? Let's take a moment of quiet, inviting the Lord to speak into our hearts about our attitudes, our choices, our behaviour. And let's seek the mindset of Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would help us to grow more like you. Help us to understand the enormity of what you did for us. Help us to reflect your humility. Work in us by your Holy Spirit to change us and make us into the people you want us to be. That we can live as a community in humility, sharing and serving one another. For your name's sake. Amen. Thank you, David. As we reflect on those words let us turn to god in praise and worship again as we sing turn your eyes upon jesus
inside where justice and mercy embrace there the son of god gave his life for us and our measure Let us now affirm our faith together before we come to a time of prayer. Please uh, do say the words that will appear on the screen as we go along. If you feel comfortable and in the right uh, place in your relationship with God to say these words, only say them uh, if it's true for you. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, 
and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Julie Rigby is now going to lead us in prayer, which will end uh, with us together saying the Lord's Prayer. As I read our prayers today, please join in with me when I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you would join in, hear our prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for Bishop Mark and our new designate Bishop of Birkenhead, Julie, that they may, as shepherds of your choosing, humbly watch over us, your flock, and lead us in true humility as we serve Christ in this parish by being united in your truth living together in your love and revealing your glory in the world lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for our queen and we ask you to continue to bless her abundantly and as she reigns over us we pray for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, that they may be like-minded in wanting to make our world a better place to live in, by treating all people equally, regardless of status, belief, skin colour, gender or sexual orientation. We pray for justice, mercy and peace for everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may copy the example of our Lord Jesus on interacting with each other and help us to treat them as we would want them to treat us. Jesus washed his disciples' feet to help us also to be as humble in our dealings with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need or distress this day, for those who are suffering the effects of COVID or long COVID, and we pray for those who are poorly in any other ways. We pray for those who have lost their livelihoods through this pandemic, their homes, their families, and in some cases, their marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we pray for those who have died in faith and for those whom have been left behind and are mourning their loss. Let's take a few moments of silence as we bring to our Father the name of those who are grieving and suffering. Give them courage and hope in their faith, Lord Father, and let them be aware of your presence beside them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we humbly commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's join together in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth 
as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now sing our closing hymn together, Be Thou My Vision. brings us to the end of our time together. I pray that you have been encouraged and challenged by our time together this morning and I pray that your relationship with God has grown deeper and more meaningful because of it. Uh, if you want to come to the physical services don't forget you need to book so get in touch with the office. Um, as we get closer to switch into live streaming, these online pre-recorded services will start to fade away, but the live stream will take their place. But if you want to be on camera in the actual service, then you need to let the office know. Um, but until then, let me pray and then uh, we can carry on with our wonderful Sunday. Lord, I thank you that you have been with us this morning. I 
pray that you will help us and teach us to humble ourselves before you and before others. Pray that we will turn our eyes to you. That we will look to you for everything that we need. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you sent your son to die for us so that we could be in relationship with you. I pray that as we leave this virtual space and go about our lives that we will take that message of love to everyone we come into contact with through our words but also our deeds. Amen. Thank you and goodbye.